The time is at hand. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order. One of the many spirits said to haunt the area. Unknown animal attack. We need a great reset. Babylon the Great is fallen, is fallen. Welcome to In Dark Places. My name is Jumbo Fugit. I'm with the government. I'm here to help. I always take tons of little notes and things about show ideas. And people send me cool videos all the time. I save that stuff. And news articles, I have tons of stuff saved on my computer. I wish you could see my desk. It's covered with little scribbles of notes and things that I want to talk about. And they just somehow get buried underneath each other all the time. Actually, it's kind of messy. I wish you couldn't see it. It looks pretty bad. But I was going through all my notes of useless stuff, and I found a little story that I don't think I told on the show. I meant to back on June 19th when I wrote this, but I don't think I ever did talk about it. And if I did, I apologize, because you're going to hear it again. <laughs> but I was talking about how me and Brandon went to go see the Flash movie back on June 19th, a couple months ago. Six weeks ago. Close enough. <laughs> but I was talking about this weird girl that checked us out there at the movies. The world digital currency thing is primed and ready to be rolled out. People just don't really grasp money these days. So we went to go see the Flash movie and the popcorn and drinks along with the tickets for the movie it all came out to 3250 and I had a pocket full of change to get rid of so I gave the cashier girl 3550 she stared at me with a lost look on her face and gave me the 50 cents back and then opened her trench drawer and tried to figure out what to do next it took her about 30 seconds to pick up a five dollar bill she looked at it for a few seconds and put it back in the drawer. And then she gave me 250 back. It's funny, but mostly sad. Remember kids, don't take the mark. This is a story sent in by our friend Paul Chadwick. Thanks Paul. City-sized comet headed toward Earth grows horns after massive volcanic eruption by Harry Baker. Thanks, Harry. An unusual volcanic comet flying toward the sun appears to have grown horns after it exploded, causing it to shine like a small star and shower super-cold magma into space. It's the first time this comet has been seen erupting in almost 70 years. The comet named 12P slash Pons Brooks 12P is a cold volcano comet. Like all other comets, the icy object is made up of a solid nucleus filled with a mix of ice, dust, and gas, and is surrounded by a fuzzy cloud of gas called a coma, which leaks out of the comet's interior. But unlike most other comets, the gas and ice inside 12P's nucleus builds up so much that the celestial object can violently explode, shooting out its frosty guts, known as cryomagma, through large cracks in the nucleus's shell. On July 20th, multiple astronomers detected a major outburst from the comet, which suddenly became around 100 times brighter than it usually appears. Spaceweather.com reported. Thanks, Spaceweather.com. This increase in brightness occurred when the comet's coma suddenly swelled up with gas and ice crystals released from the comet's interior, allowing it to reflect more sunlight back to Earth. 
As of July 26, the comet's coma had grown to around 143,000 miles across, or more than 7,000 times wider than its nucleus, which has an estimated diameter of around 18.6 miles. But interestingly, an irregularity in the shape of the expanded coma makes the comet look as though it has sprouted horns. Other experts have likened the deformed comet to the Millennium Falcon, one of the iconic spaceships from Star Wars. Spaceweather.com reported. Spaceweather.com is on top of this. The unusual shape of the coma is likely due to an irregularity in the shape of 12-piece nucleus, Miles said. The outflowing gas was likely partially obstructed by an outsticking lobe on the nucleus, which created a notch in the expanded coma. And this is all just a little preview for when the comet is going to come and hit us on June 2nd, 2024. But the government doesn't want you to know about that. And now here is the Nicolas Cage Meltdown of the Week. I'm not asking you to be a saint, just a good man. Let's get something nice and sparkling clear. If there is a good man out there, somewhere it's not me. And I don't have a problem with that, okay? Are you coming or not? All of this alien disclosure is slowly coming out. It's crazy because no one seems to care. Not even the powers that be. 20 years ago, I would have imagined them freaking out about something like this. They're scurrying around in their little underground bases, yelling, What are we going to do? What are we going to do? And then they ultimately decide to kill the witnesses off and make it look like a suicide or pin some kind of scandal on them or something. But we're not hearing a peep out of these guys now. You know why? Because they don't care anymore. They're beyond aliens. They have a new agenda now. It's all about fear. There's this nasty virus and we're all gonna die. It's summertime now and it's hot outside. They put aliens on the back burner for now. They have too much momentum building in total control. And this week on the show, I'm looking at some governmental conspiracies. The whole alien agenda used to be all about keeping the aliens secret from the public because they didn't want the public going all crazy and stuff like that, I guess. UFO conspiracy theories argue that various governments and politicians globally, in particular the United States government, are suppressing evidence that unidentified flying objects are controlled by non-human intelligence or built using alien technology. Such conspiracy theories usually argue that Earth governments are in communication or cooperation with extraterrestrial visitors despite public disclaimers, and further that some of these theories claim that the governments are explicitly allowing alien abduction. Like most people, my journey down the rabbit hole kind of started with the Roswell story. On July 8, 1947, Roswell Army Airfield issued a press release stating that they had recovered a flying disc. The Army quickly retracted the statement and clarified that the crashed object was a conventional weather balloon. The Roswell incident did not surface again until the late 1970s when it was incorporated into conspiracy literature. On December 26, 1949, True Magazine published an article by Donald Kehoe titled, The Flying Saucers Are Real. Kehoe, a former major in the U.S. Marines, claimed that elements within the Air Force knew that saucers existed and had concluded that they were likely interplanetary. The article examined the Mantell UFO incident in which 25-year-old Captain Thomas Mantell, a Kentucky Air National Guard pilot died in a crash of his P-51 Mustang fighter plane near Franklin, Kentucky on January 7, 1948. After being sent 
in pursuit of a UFO. He quoted an unnamed pilot who opinioned that the Air Force's explanation looks like a cover-up to me. The article cited a supposed report from Air Material Command and claimed a rocket authority at Wright Field had concluded saucers were interplanetary. Concern over a public panic of the kind that supposedly occurred after the 1938 War of the Worlds broadcast is cited in the article as a possible motive for the cover-up. Citing historic sources, Kehoe speculated that similar sightings have occurred for at least several centuries. In 1955, Kehoe authored a new book that pointedly accused elements of the United States government of engaging in a conspiracy to cover up knowledge of flying saucers. Kehoe claims the existence of a silence group of orchestrating this conspiracy. Historian of folklore Curtis Peebles argues the flying saucer conspiracy marked a shift in Kehoe's belief system. No longer were flying saucers the central theme that now belonged to the silence group and its cover-up. For the next two decades, Kehoe's beliefs about this would dominate the flying saucer myth. The book features claims of a possible discovery of an orbiting space base or a moon base, knowledge of which might trigger a public panic. The flying saucer conspiracy also incorporated legends of the Bermuda Triangle disappearances. Allegations of suppression of UFO-related evidence have persisted for many decades. Some conspiracy theories also claim that some governments might have removed and or destroyed or suppressed physical evidence. Some examples follow. On July 7, 1947, William Rhodes photographed an unusual object over Phoenix, Arizona. The photos appeared in the Phoenix newspaper and a few other papers. An Army Air Force intelligence officer and an FBI agent interviewed Rhodes on August 29th and convinced him to surrender the negatives, which he did the next day. He was informed that he would not get them back. He later tried and was unsuccessful. The photos were analyzed and subsequently appeared in some classified UFO intelligence reports. A June 27, 1950 movie of a flying disc over Louisville, Kentucky, taken by a Louisville Courier-Journal photographer, had the U.S. Air Force Directors of Counterintelligence discussing in memos how to best obtain the movie and interview photographer without revealing Air Force interest. One memo suggested the FBI be used, and then precluded the FBI getting involved. Another memo said it would be nice if OSI could arrange to secure a copy of the film in some covert manner, but if it was not feasible, one of the Air Force scientists might have to negotiate directly with the newspaper. In a recent interview, the photographer confirmed meeting with military intelligence and still having the film in his possession until then, but refused to say what happened to the film after that. In another 1950 movie incident from Montana, Nicholas Mariana filmed some unusual aerial objects and eventually turned the film over to the Air Force, but insisted that the first part of the film, clearly showing the objects as spinning discs, had been removed when it was returned to him. On January 22, 1958, when NICAP director Donald Kehoe appeared on CBS television, his statements on UFOs were censored by the Air Force. During the show, when Kehoe tried to depart from the censored script to reveal something that has never been disclosed before, CBS cut the sound, later stating Kehoe was about to violate predetermined security standards and about to say something he was not authorized to release. Conspiracy theorists claim that what Kehoe was about to reveal were four publicly unknown military studies concluding UFOs were interplanetary. On March 1, 1967, memo directed to all U.S. Air Force divisions from General Hewitt Willis, Assistant Vice Chief of Staff, stated that unverified information indicated that unknown individuals impersonating Air Force officers and other military personnel had been 
harassing civilian UFO witnesses, warning them not to talk, and also confiscating film, referring specifically to the Heflin incident. They were to be notified of any personnel to become aware of any other incidents. According to one theory related to the assassination of President John F. Kennedy, the CIA killed Kennedy in order to prevent him from leaking information to the Soviet Union about a covert program to reverse engineer alien technology. Nick Cook, an aviation investigative journalist for Jane's Information Group and researcher of Billion Dollar Secret and author of The Hunt for Zero Point, claims to have uncovered documentary evidence that top secret U.S. defense industry technology has been developed by government-backed defense industry programs beginning in the 1940s using research conducted by Nazi scientists during World War II and recovered by Allied military intelligence, then taken to the U.S. and developed further with the collaboration of the same former German scientists at top secret facilities established at White Sands, New Mexico, and later Area 51, allegedly resulting in production of real-world prototype operational supersonic craft actually tested and used in clandestine military exercises, with other developments incorporated later into spy aircraft tasked with overflying hostile countries. The UFO story, the evidence of alien technology is being suppressed and removed or destroyed, was generated and then promoted by the CIA beginning in 1947 as a false-led disinformation to cover it all up for the sake of national security, particularly during the Cold War, at a time when the Soviet Union, too, was developing its own top-secret high-tech UFO craft. Cook's conclusions, alleging suppression of evidence of advanced human technology instead of alien, together with what he presents as declassified top secret documents and blueprints, and his interviews of various experts, was developed and broadcast as a feature documentary on British television in 2005 as UFOs, The Secret Evidence and in the U.S. in 2006 as a two-part episode on the History Channel's UFO Files, retitled An Alien History of Planet Earth, which added introduction by actor William Shatner. The History Channel program teaser promised a look at rumors of declassified military aircraft incorporating alien technology into their designs. In 2013, Senator Mike Gravel claimed that the government was suppressing evidence of extraterrestrials. Benjamin Radford has pointed out how unlikely such suppression of evidence is, given that the UFO cover-up conspiracy would have to span decades across international borders and transcend political administrations that all the world's governments, regardless of which political party is in power, and even among enemies, would have concluded to continue the cover-up. So yeah, just the UFO aspect of conspiracy theories can take you down many little sub-rabbit holes. But I think the government has kind of shifted gears on the whole UFO thing. Because now, like I said earlier, they're all about promoting fear now. They want everybody to freak out and just be kind of scared to death so the government can completely control every little aspect of their lives and all this alien disclosure coming out now is kind of playing right into that fear and I think they're ultimately going to fake some kind of UFO alien attack on the world or something with Project Blue Beam and they're going to just lock everybody down for good they have to hold on to this alien narrative too so they can explain the rapture because what are they going to say to all the people that are left behind uh, 63 million people just disappeared last night them pesky aliens took them normal's not coming back but Jesus is I'm sure you remember what happened three years ago when a little virus was created in a lab 
and unleashed on the world. I've got to be careful how I word this because stuff like this is still being censored to this day. Just ask YouTube and Google what happened to episode 6 of this podcast. Hmm. <laughs> but it's still on iTunes if you're interested. Every news station in the world pretty much is owned by a group called BlackRock. BlackRock is the world's largest investment manager and has become increasingly influential in Wall Street. The firm has hired notable policymakers over the years and has at least three leaders with the New York based asset manager on resumes to hold prominent roles in President Joe Biden's cabinet. So good times. But these guys own everything, so they had the media, every one of them all in cahoots, just drilling fear into people non-stop that's all you would see on the news and every one of the different news stations that are supposedly competitors were all mysteriously reading the same script because they're all owned by BlackRock and BlackRock wrote the script they're with the Illuminati they're the bad guys Hi, I'm Fox San Antonio's Jessica Headley. And I'm Ryan Wolf. Our, our greatest, greatest responsibility, responsibility is, is to, to serve, serve our, our Treasure Valley communities. The El Paso Las Cruces communities. Eastern Iowa communities. Mid-Michigan communities. We are extremely proud of the quality, balanced journalism that CBS4 News produces. But we are concerned about trouble and trying to be responsible. One-sided news stories plaguing our country. Plaguing our country. The sharing of biased and false news has become all too common on social media. More alarming, some media outlets publish these same fake stories without checking facts first. The sharing of biased and false, false news has, has become, become all too common, common on, on social, social media. media. More alarming, some media this is extremely dangerous to our democracy. 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 Now that all that whole virus thing has kind of died down, they're pumping up the new agenda, which there's nothing new under the sun, but they're rehashing the agenda from 2000 or so about climate change. So you see that on every news channel now. They're just constantly talking about how evil people are for destroying the planet. And the whole time, they're the ones that are actually pushing the whole climate to change with facilities such as HARP and their chemtrail programs and stuff like that. The High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program, HARP, is a University of Alaska Fairbanks program which researches the ionosphere, the highest ionized part of Earth's atmosphere. The most prominent instrument at HARP is the ionospheric research instrument a high-power radio frequency transmitter facility operating in the high-frequency band. The IRI is used to temporarily excite a limited area of the ionosphere. Other instruments such as a VHF and UHF radar, a flux gate magnometer, and others are used to study the physical process that occur in the excited region. Initially HARP was jointly funded by the Air Force and Navy, the University of Alaska and the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, also known as DARPA. It was designed and built by BAE Advanced Technologies. The original purpose was to analyze the ionosphere and investigate 
the potential for developing ionospheric enhancement technology for radio communications and surveillance. Since 2015, it has been operated by the University of Alaska Fairbanks. And that's the cover story. It might have started out that way, but they learned how to control the weather in doing so. So they can do anything they want to right there from Alaska. Cause hurricanes to pop up over off the coast of Africa. They can cause earthquakes, they can cause all kinds of junk. Chemtrails can be kind of aided with harp in manipulating the weather while dropping chemicals from airplanes. In 2015, 2,000 geese fell from the sky and were found dead in Idaho. Some believe it was caused by chemtrails. In 2016, the harp facility held an open house so the public could see that they were not up to anything dangerous, such as controlling people's minds or the weather and stuff like that. But what they didn't show people was what they had hid in their basement and in the back closets and stuff like that. Like, here, we'll show you everything we have. Yeah, right. <laughs> On May 22nd, 2011, at 5.41 p.m., Joplin, Missouri was hit with a devastating tornado with winds reaching 200 miles per hour. The tornado leveled the town and killed 161 people. Some people think that the tornado was caused by harp. Just like they created Hurricane Sandy and pretty much every other big disaster in recent years. Some of the most popular conspiracy theories in the U.S. surround the Kennedy assassination. On November 22, 1963, President John F. Kennedy was in a motorcade in Dallas, Texas when he was struck by two bullets. He died at 46 years old. Lee Harvey Oswald was arrested for the assassination of the president and two days later Oswald was killed on live television. Kinda suspicious. <laughs> the Warren Commission was then created to investigate the incident and concluded that Oswald acted alone. However, some believe there is more to the story. There are theories that the CIA hired Oswald because of the president's reactions to communism and the Bay of Pigs invasion. Others believe the Mafia, Cuba, or the Soviet Union were involved in the assassination. Videos of the incident were released. People claimed Oswald's location made it impossible for him to have killed the president. And that's mostly because the driver of Kennedy's limousine is the one that fired the fatal shot. And the whole Warren Commission was about as useless as the 9-11 Commission, which did nothing to investigate the fact that Larry Silverstein bought a 99-year lease on the World Trade Center in June 2001. He had a big insurance plan and just so happened to collect $4.5 billion after the World Trade Center attacks. And the 9-11 commission doesn't say a word about why there was no plane ever found at the Pentagon or why there's no security footage of a plane hitting the Pentagon and there's no mention of why there was trillions of dollars that went missing from the Pentagon just a couple of days before 9-11 that were supposedly tied up in uh, black ops and stuff like that and there was never an explanation of why Building 7 collapsed two planes hit the World Trade Center so what made Building 7 fall. There was no plane there. What about the Safeguard Complex in North Dakota? It was built during the Cold War, but some say it's related to the Illuminati. The Stanley R. Mickelson Safeguard Complex in North Dakota was built in the 1970s to detect incoming missiles. The $500 million building is shaped like an unfinished pyramid much like the one you see on the back of a one dollar bill and has a round circle on each face. Mysteriously, the building was opened and in operation for only one day. It opened on October 1st, 1975 and closed on October 2nd, 1975 when Congress decided to end the program, leading many to construct conspiracy theories. 
Some assume the building is actually used by the Illuminati because of its pyramid shape, which is a symbol of Freemasonry, the teachings of the largest secret society. And watch out for those Freemasons. Those guys pretend to be doing good for the community and stuff like that. But it's actually a satanic cult. True story. They worship a god that is not the god of the Bible. Freemasonry, sometimes called the craft, does not believe in one true god. Rather, each man must act with courage, fidelity, and devotion to his god. Freemasonry teaches the existence of a supreme being, whoever that may be, the god of Islam, Hinduism, or any other religion will do. The very process of joining a lodge requires apprentices to ignore the exclusivity of Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. Freemasonry focuses on good works in the pursuit of personal self-improvement. By returning to the lodge, witnessing the degrees, and becoming an active part in the Masonic community, a man can build himself into a better man. These young people join the Freemasonry and they think they're doing all good and everything. But it's not revealed to them until later, whenever they become a 33 degree Mason, that they've been duped. The Mahir Cave in Oregon has a long and interesting history dating from the pre-colonial era. The 3,000 foot cave was once used by Native Americans but is now owned by a Freemason group called Robert Burns Masonic Lodge. Every year they hold a meeting inside the cave, raising a number of conspiracy theories. Some conspirators are convinced the cave has a door to hell, while others think it connects to an underground tunnel system that stretches across the U.S. to other Mason-focused locations. Others believe satanic worship and sacrifices occur in the cave. When you're having a conspiracy show, it's hard to not mention MK Ultra. These are the guys that turn government officials and entertainers, people like that, into puppets and have them just say whatever they want them to say. And they basically program people by hypnotizing them, like you see on Maury Povich or something like that. They can be programmed to conduct mass shootings, all kinds of stuff like that. And some people think that Biden is under the control of MK Ultra, but that guy's just a robot. You ever see him put his mask back on? It's kind of creepy. The real Biden died back around 2014, 2015, somewhere around there. But yeah, Little Wayne, um, Britney Spears, Al Roker, just random people. They're under the control of MK Ultra, and their latest little experimental flop was Mitch McConnell. He was at a press conference last week answering questions from reporters and stuff, and apparently somebody asked something that they weren't supposed to. So his handler came over and like pinched him on the arm, saying, A string is a thread to keep him from answering the question. After finishing the NDA uh, this week, it's been good bipartisan cooperation, and a string of. Uh, uh, After finishing the NDA uh, this week, it's been good bipartisan cooperation, and a string of. Uh, uh, and he just froze there had a little glitch. They have those little key words like that that kind of zap them back into reality. Kind of weird. Here's a new ongoing conspiracy. The Canadian wildfires are going to raise the prices of lumber because Lowe's and all those places like that, they get their lumber from Canada. So if all the wood is burning up in Canada, then the prices of wood are going to skyrocket this fall. The Denver International Airport is well known for a number of conspiracy theories. The airport is twice the size of Manhattan, New York, and almost every corner of the massive transportation hub is filled with conspiracy theories. 
For starters, the airport was $2 billion over budget, leading some to believe it has an underground structure that is either used as bunkers or as the headquarters of the supposed world-controlling group, the Illuminati. Others believe the building was built by neo-Nazis because markers and plaques around the airport say it is funded by the New World Airport Commission, but no information can be found about the organization anywhere. Some even say the runways are laid out like swastikas if viewed from above. The art around the airport is also some of people's cause of concern. Most notably, there is a 32-foot sculpture of a horse that fell on its sculptor and killed him. Murals around the airport are also troubling to some, including images of a Nazi officer in a gas mask, children near a burning building, and the devil jumping out of a suitcase. And now I'll kind of wrap it around full circle for you. Area 51 is the common name of a highly classified United States Air Force facility within the Nevada Test Range. A remote detachment administered by Edwards Air Force Base, the facility is officially called Homie Airport or Groom Lake. Details of its operations are not made public, but the Air Force says that it is an open training range and is commonly thought to support the development and testing of experimental aircrafts and weapon systems. The Air Force and CIA acquired the site in 1955 primarily for flight testing, the Lockheed U-2 aircraft. The intense secrecy surrounding the base has made it the frequent subject of conspiracy theories and a central component of UFO folklore. It has never been declared a secret base, but all research and occurrences in Area 51 are top secret slash sensitive compartmental information. The CIA publicly acknowledged the base's existence on June 25, 2013, following a Freedom of Information Act request filed in 2005 and declassified documents detailing its history and purpose. Up until 2013, they said it didn't even exist, and people could drive by and see it and stuff. They knew it was there, but the government just swore that it didn't exist. Kind of weird. <laughs> Area 51 is located in the southern portion of Nevada, 83 miles north-northwest of Las Vegas. The surrounding area is a popular tourist attraction, including the small town of Rachel on the extraterrestrial highway. These conspiracy theories include the storage, examination, and reverse engineering of crashed alien spacecraft, including materials supposedly recovered at Roswell, the study of their occupants, and the manufacture of aircraft based on alien technology, meetings or joint undertakings with extraterrestrials, the development of exotic energy weapons for the Strategic Defense Initiative, or other weapons programs, the development of weather control, the development of time travel and teleportation technology, the development of exotic propulsion systems related to the Aurora program, activities related to a shadowy one world government or the Majestic 12 organization. So there you go, there's some famous conspiracy theories. Hope you enjoyed this little trip down the rabbit hole with me. I'll see you again right here next week. Bless you guys.